Hello, today I'm presenting our paper, a feature importance analysis for soft sensing based predictions in a chemical subformation process at the ICPS 2020 conference. First of all, I would like to introduce some context about our work. This work was conducted at Unger Fabriker, which is a chemical factory located in Norway. Specifically, it is located in the south part of Norway, in a city called Fredrikstad. In this company, they produce chemical compounds called surfactants. Surfactants are compounds that lower the surface tension between two liquids, for example, gases and liquids, and liquids and solids. Surfactants have several applications, including personal care products, such as shampoos, toothpastes, soaps, and so on. And they are also used for laundry products, like leeches, soaps, detergents, etc. In this video, I am going to show how surfactants can break the tension between a liquid and a solid. For the demonstration, I am going to use a staple and I will try to put it on top of the water. I'm using a piece of paper to make it easier. And now we can see that the staple is floating. Even though the density of the staple is higher than that of the water, it floats because the water has a surface tension that supports the staple. Now I will try to sink the staple using a couple of drops of water. After adding the drops, nothing happens. The tension is still supporting the staple. Now I will try with a surfactant, in this case a soap that is used to wash dishes. Now after adding some drops of surfactant, we see that the surface tension was broken and the staple sinks. This is a diagram of the overall sulfonation process to generate the surfactants. Here we have different components such as the sulfur oven, a converter, filters, and a reactor. And each of these components have some input. For example, the amount of air injected to the converter, the amount of air injected to the filter, the amount of raw material, and so on. One of the most important factors in this process is this anti-value. During the process, a specialist takes a sample from the process and computes this anti-value. This anti-value is called the neutralization number, and this number is used to measure the quality of the product. There are some challenges during this process. For example, the factory produces different types of surfactants based on the final product. And between one product and another product, there is a transition in which an specialist needs to take samples to estimate the product quality based on the anti-value. And this process takes approximately 30 minutes. During this time, there is product waste. One possible solution to automate the process would be to install a sensor here that continuously monitors the product quality. However, this type of solution could be infeasible because of high costs of the equipment or perhaps no such type of sensor exists. Instead, we adopted a soft sensing approach. In soft sensing, instead of having a real sensor, we can use the process parameters to try to estimate the variable of interest. In this case, we use machine learning and we use those input parameters to train a model that automatically predicts the anti value. In this case, we can reduce the time from 30 minutes to a couple of seconds. In this work, we wanted to explore two research questions. The first one is which are the most relevant variables when predicting the NT number? And the second one is if we can predict the NT number accurately based only on a subset of the variables. The motivation for this is because sometimes some sensors may fail. So we want to know if we can still predict the NT value with the remaining sensors. In order to answer the research questions, we analyzed a database with approximately 14,000 data points. Each data point has nine variables, including the amount of raw material, sulfur dew points, the amount of air injected into the sulfur oven, and so on. 
And finally, we also have the empty value as computed by the specialist. Each variable has an associated ID just for readability purposes. And the, the idea is to use the first eight variables as input variables to predict the empty value. All variables are continuous, so we are going to train regression models. For the experiments, we split the data into 80% for the training set, and we use the remaining 20% for the test sets. Then we trained a random forest regressor, and based on the out of bug error, we obtained this variable importance plot. The variables are sorted in descending order, starting with the most important one at the top, in this case, variable A. In the x-axis, we have the percentage of increase in mean squared error. In this case, for example, if we remove variable A, the error is expected to increase approximately 22%. On the other hand, if we remove variable F, the error will increase just by 10% when predicting the empty value. In this case, we can see that the top three most important variables are A, B, and H. If we look at the table at the right, we see that A corresponds to the raw material, B is the amount of sulfur, and H is the molar weight. Based on the previous results, we trained three models, including a random forest, a linear regression, and a regression tree. Here I am only presenting the results for the random forest, but in the paper you can find the results for the remaining models. If you remember from the previous slide, we found that the most important variables were A, B, H, and so on. So what we did here was to train a random forest model using only the most important variable, in this case, variable A. This resulted in a root mean squared error of 0.5, a mean absolute error of 0.3, and a correlation of 0.81. Then we trained a new random forest model, but now including variable A and variable B. In this case, the error was reduced to 0.23, the mean absolute error was reduced to 0.1 and the correlation increased to 0.96. We kept doing this until we included all eight variables. And the best results were achieved when using all the eight input, input variables. But one thing we can note here is that the performance when using all the variables and when using only the top three most important variables, for example, is not that different. So here we can see that even though we are only using three variables, we are still getting pretty good results compared to when using all variables. So this means that, for example, if one of the sensors during the process fails, for example, the sensor in charge of measuring the dew point, then we can still try to predict the empty value with good accuracy. So we would not need to stop the process. One thing we noted with the regression tree is that after adding variable H, all the results remain the same, including the root mean squared error, the mean absolute error, and the correlation. In order to investigate why this was happening, we decided to plot the resulting regression tree when using all the eight variables. This is the resulting regression tree. And what we can see here is that the regression tree algorithm only selected variables H, A, and B, which also happen to be the most important ones selected by the random forest algorithm. So this adds evidence that these are the most important variables. Next, we evaluated feature importance using three filter methods, including key-squared, in ratio and correlation. Filter methods evaluate the importance of each variable independently of the others and with respect to an output variable. In this case, the output, output variable is the empty number. The table here shows the results for each of the three methods, and the variables are sorted in descending order, starting with the most important one at the left. Here we can see that the three methods selected these three sets of variables as the most important ones. 
And again, we see that A, B, and H were the top three most important variables. These results are similar to what we found when using other methods like random forest and the regression tree plot. In order to answer the second research question, which is about whether or not we can have accurate models when using only a subset of the available variables, we evaluated the performance of the three models using only the three top most important variables and compared it against with all the variables. In this table, I am only showing the performance for random forest, but in the paper, you can find the results for the remaining models. Here we can see that the results were very similar with respect to root mean squared error, and the same was true for the other performance metrics. In general, we can see that we obtained better results when using all variables, but still we obtained accurate results when only using the three most important variables. These are the initial research questions. And for the first one, we found that the most important variables were the amount of raw material, the amount of sulfur, and the molar weight. For the second research question, we also found that it is possible to train accurate prediction models using only a subset of the variables. These are some of the limitations of our work. In our, in our experiments, we didn't consider model stability issues. This means that the models can produce very different results when introducing small variations in the training data. We also used a variable forward selection approach, which does not consider all possible variable combinations. And finally, we used a limited number of models, only three, including random forest, linear regression, and regression tree.